first custody case you're gonna call is, forgive me if I say your last name wrong, it's Martini, right? Yes, it's Martini. Martini. Uh, Ms. Martini versus uh, Ms. Chavez, Mr. Ramirez, the dog in question is Joy, a number 372-197. SFPD case number 190-365-245. generated on the March of 22nd, 2019. Uh, like I said before, this is a custody case. This is Joy's second hearing. Um, Ms. Martini uh, has some terrible uh, injuries that happened. She's here, thank goodness. She uh, just found out she sustained a broken rib during this incident. Uh, from the first hearing that uh, Joy came to on August, 17, 2017, a decision was made on September 22nd, 2017, where Mr. Foster, who was a hearing officer at that time, uh, did not declare Ms. Ramirez's dog, Joy, uh, vicious or dangerous, but uh, Mr. Ramirez uh, stated that he would keep Joy a muzzle and walk her, and, and he needed to do more. He needs to ensure that Joy does not have any opportunities to escape and wander unattended. In addition, it appears that both parties have since moved, and it's highly unlikely that the dogs will encounter each other again in that case. Um, so I'm going to give you both case files and that. Um, Ms. Martini, if you want to come on up. Rochelle, R-O-C-H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E. middle name is Elaine, last name is Martini, M-A-R-T-I-N-I. my dog in his harness and on the leash and I was leaving the building my apartment building um, there's an entrance to the street that goes up three steps and is on this and that at that point I'm on the sidewalk and we were leaving to go on his morning walk and we got to the third step and turned left to go up the hill and there was just this blur coming out of the right side of my vision and it was this big dog and he he just had no eyes for me it was just straight just 100 percent on my dog and i tried to pick up my dog but i wasn't fast enough dog uh, grabbed his leg when I was picking him up so I put it back down because I didn't want to uh, rip his leg off and then he just proceeded to just bite and shake um, my dog multiple times he had it by the shoulder and my dog was screaming and I was screaming and there was no one around there was nobody anywhere no leash on my other dog. And I kept trying to get him off, and I couldn't get him off. And I ended up on the ground wrestling with that dog, trying to get him off my dog. And he finally got, he let go at one point, and my dog ran. And then he turned on me. And he started uh, biting my hand, and he tried to bite my my neck and he got me here and I was screaming and still nobody came 
and I, I grabbed, he went after, he was looking for my dog to go back after my dog again. And I grabbed his arm and then there was a, a worker on the street who came by and I said, get my dog, get my dog. And I was holding on to this big dog and I was laying on the ground on the sidewalk and I was holding on to his leg so he couldn't get my dog. But he's still trying to get my dog. And then I got up and I got him around the collar and I straddled him and I tried to hold him in place and make sure my dog was okay. And then my neighbor came outside and um, and I didn't know, I had not seen this dog before, I had no idea where it came from. It came from my right, but I didn't know that it was the dog that lived next door. I had never seen that dog, I'd only heard that dog barking and throwing itself against the fence when we go out in the yard, but I'd never seen it, and I didn't know. And I took the dog, I told my other neighbor who came out to take my dog inside the main area inside the apartment building, inside the vestibule, behind the door to get him away from the view of that big dog. So he just stopped fixating on my dog. And he was trying to bite my hand as I'm holding his collar. And he ripped up my hand and punctured this hand multiple times. And I took him down to the to where I thought he was from because the worker said, oh yeah, that's that dog, he lives there. So I walked down there and I was screaming, come get your dog. And finally someone came out and she came to get the dog. And as soon as she had the dog, I ran to go see what was going on with my dog. Cause I was so scared. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Just wanna go back a little bit. When um, the big dog attacked, your dog's name is Shorty, right? Uh huh. What kind of dog is Shorty? He's a dachshund. And how much does he weigh? 25 pounds. Okay. So when Joy went to after Shorty, mm. um, did you see any lead up to that? Did, did the came other dog? Out of nowhere. Okay, just he just ran straight to Shorty. It was that dog was full tilt running when he when he came into my range of vision. Okay. And then where did you see the the big dog bite your dog? Oh. Everywhere. On the shoulder, on the leg, on the chest, on the back, on the ass. Multiple bites. Was everywhere. Were, were the bites bite and release or were they grab and shake? And were both. There was bite and release and then Shorty would scream around and scream and I would smack and try and get between them and it was bite and release and then there was bite and shake. He bit and shook Shorty's shoulder and he was on his back and screaming. Okay, and, and then you intervened? I did. Okay, what exactly happened when you interviewed? Where did you place your hand? I went, I actually didn't use, I, I, I threw my body down between them. Okay. To separate them. Okay. And then your dog ran off? Yeah. And how much time uh, elapsed before the big dog started biting you? Oh, it was immediate. It was right then. Okay. And how long did, the, did you, how long did the bites directed at you last? If you know. You know, honestly, it's so hard to piece it all together because it's just, I think, I don't know, maybe a minute, two minutes. I, time it's is okay. very relative when you're- It is, when you're under the stress of the moment. Something understand. like that. Do you know how many times he bit you? No. Okay, but you did say he went for your neck, correct? Yeah. And could you describe um, a little more detail what your injuries were? Uh, um, I have, okay, I have two sets of stitches on my left hand. I have other lacerations and massive bruising and puncture wounds on my left hand. On my right hand, I had multiple puncture wounds, but no long rips on the skin here. I had punctures here and here. Extends so the record should reflect that you're touching your chin and your cheek. Yes. And um, bruising and bleeding here, I ended up going to ER. Uh, 
my neighbor David came out and called 911 and the police came and the animal care people came and the ambulance came and took me to the emergency room so I could get patched up. Do you have any nerve damage in your hands do you know, or is it It's still too early to tell. Okay. I've got more functionality back than this one, but this one, I, 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 I don't know what's going on. I have to wait and see. Okay. And your dog was seriously injured as well? He actually came out a little bit better than I did. For all the bites that he had, he wasn't as beat up as I was. Okay. I mean, there, there, there should be documentation from the vet when I took him into the emergency service. I did see that. Yeah. So he has a broken tooth as well that we realized came from that also, which we have to go and fix once he's 100 percent stable. Did your dog get stitches as well? He did not get stitches. He did not need stitches. Thank God. I think I was too fast. Miss Martin, what would you like to have happen today as a result I don't think it's right for an animal that has a track record of hurting other animals or people to be allowed to be in public at all, ever. Thank you. Oh, that's it. Okay. Hi, David. Uh, tell me your name and spell it for me. Yes, my name is David Avitia. Last name is A, V is in Victor, I, T is in Tom, I, A. Okay. Um, Please tell me what you know. I yes, know. I'm, the, I'm the neighbor and her friend, okay. uh, Rochelle's friend. I've lived in the apartment building next door to that house for the last, since 1994. Um, I work nights. I was sleeping on the couch in my living room. I hear all these screams. This was on the 24th. On that morning, yes, right outside, literally outside of my living room window. First, I, you know, you're out of, you're out of it, you're coming to, and so I finally get up. I look down. I can see directly down on top of her. She through my window. She's sitting on the ground, struggling with the dog. The dog's trying to get his jaws around her neck, but luckily she had her chin like this, so it's got, I guess, one set of teeth into her chin and on the side of her neck here. Had she have not had her chin down up like this, he would have gone for her neck. Um, so the record should show that you're... Yes, I witnessed it from my living room window directly right above the whole scene. But the body motions you're doing that when um, the dog went to bite her, her and She's sitting chin, down, she's like this. Her chin was and pressed. And he's trying to get his jaw around her like this, but her chin, the tooth is getting into her chin. Okay. Whereas if she her neck was up, chin was up, he would have gotten her neck like this. So her her she was chin to chest. Chin to chest, like this. Okay. Yes. But you're saying that if her chin was lifted up, he would have gotten he neck would have gotten her neck and got the major artery. Um, so I put my clothes on, went outside, uh, and uh, by that point, the lady of the house next door had the dog on a leash. Um, they're a Spanish-speaking family. I'm Mexican-American. I speak Spanish. I started telling the lady in Spanish, whose dog does this belong to? I asked her three times. She wouldn't answer me. I said, I'm calling the police. That dog just injured the neighbor. That dog's going to be taken away from you. So right in that moment, I guess, the boyfriend of the daughter of the woman shows up. He tells me, that's my ex's dog. I'm coming to pick up my, my little daughter. The little girl's about maybe this tall with that vicious dog around. And uh, I tell him what happened. He's acting all nonchalant, like, oh, it's just a misunderstanding. That's not my dog. It's my girlfriend's dog or my ex-girlfriend's dog. Who's, do you know, is the person in court here today that said that to you? Uh, right, right there, that person there. Is that, is that Jonathan Ramirez? Are you Jonathan Ramirez? I am. Okay, thanks. And so that's uh, at that point, I just walked away from him. I went over to see if uh, Rochelle was okay. Police showed up, and that was it right there. Um, I work nights, and on occasion, that dog, I get home, I've got three in the morning. That, you can hear that dog barking outside. They have a fence. It's got a hole on the bottom. 
with little pieces of chopped wood. That's how I can sneak out under there. They need to patch that up so that dog can't get out of there. Do you, do you see that dog off leash in the neighborhood? Right no, there? not off leash, but off leash in the yard. The fences on either side of the properties are kind of tilted and mm -hmm. the dog gets eventually maybe dig its way under there. Um, there's an incident, I'm sure you have the police report of the house next door where there was an incident, I'm sure you probably have that. Tell me about it. Um, all I know is that the dog got into the house of the house next door on the other side and attacked their little dog about a year ago. Uh, I don't know all the details about that, but... And I know the current neighbor on that side Outside his window, the dog is always barking. It's driving him crazy. So he says he gets throws a bucket of water on it to shut the dog up because the dog's always out there barking and barking and barking. Have you personally, with your own eyes, seen other incidents involving this dog being ag aggressive with human animals? No, just when you walk by, you can hear the dog barking. Okay. Yeah, but other than this incident outside my living room window, no. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Hi, Miss Chavez. Can you own Joy? Yeah. Were you present on with the incident involving? No, I was not. I was at work. What's going on with the dog? So pretty much um, from I wasn't present, so I don't know exactly what happened from but from what I have heard from everything. Pretty much um, the, that day, um, the workers in my house, um, they came to pick up a ladder to take it to another place they were gonna fix. They have keys to the to my house. They came in there and they just did not open, they, they didn't close the door. How do you know that if, is it just what someone else told you or do you have personal knowledge? My mom, yeah, she was present when the workers came to pick up the ladder. They have keys to the house, so there was no reason for them to leave the door wide open. Mm -hmm. And if in the past, when they, they didn't have the key, they would always say that they had to go and we would close the door. They already knew that we have a dog there. So they just left the door open. No one was aware that my dog got, got loose. And from there, um, my mom told me that pretty much um, there was an incident with my dog, so I just rushed. I left work and I rushed to the scene and from there um, I seen her I passed by her and I seen her hand and she had bite marks and um, my dog was in the room with the police officer and um, from there um, you know they just explained to me what had happened that pretty much she was walking her dog and my dog was already outside and she jumped at her, and then from there, um, I'm, I'm assuming the little dog started snapping and, and growling. Well, if you weren't there, huh? if you weren't, if you didn't physically view the incident, I don't want you to testify about it. Okay. Um, you don't have personal knowledge. Well, I wasn't there, so I don't know exactly what happened at all. And did you um, co-own Joy back in 2017? There was yeah. a prior vicious and dangerous dog game? Yeah. And were you aware that the hearing officer uh, told Mr. Ramirez that you guys need to be very careful not to let the dog out? So pretty much that day we said, because he didn't show up, so pretty much we told him that we will be we will walk her with a muzzle, and she and whenever we, she was outside. And um, yeah. Do you do that? Huh? you walk with a muzzle? Yeah, we have a muzzle. What kind of muzzle? Um, it's like a, uh, I'm not really sure, but it's like a plastic muzzle. Um, and has, has, have you had any training with your dog? I mean, she has been out before, like she's been around other dogs. I have videos of her being surrounded with other humans and 
other animals and there has been no altercation. The only thing I could say is that um, since, because the dogs live right next to each other and there's always a dog barking at my dog and growling at it. So she always growls and barks back. So that's the only thing I could say that that's probably why she jumped at her. But other than that, she has been out with other dogs and she has not had a problem. The problem I'm having here is that a responsibility to protect public safety. And, you know, there's been two occasions where the dog just got out due to someone else's fault. I mean, how do we know that that's not going to happen again? Um, well, like I said, like the first one, because it was my brother's fault, he left it open. But the second was because the, the workers, we don't, if me, when I'm present, I make sure that everything's okay, but I wasn't there that day. Okay, anything further? Um, no. Thank you. First name is Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N. Last name is Ramirez, R-A-M-I-R-E-Z. Are you the primary handler of the I am. And you were not present during the um, I was actually, I just happened to pull up to pick up my daughter as my mother-in-law had Joy by the, pretty much, she has a neck piece and she had her by the collar. Okay. And she just had her and then that's when she kind of like panicked and then she kind of just told me that Joy bit a lady. That's when, I don't know his name to do with the long hair, when I was just talking to you. That's when he came up to me aggressively and was like, are you the owner, are you the owner? And I told him yes. And then that's when I just, to avoid it, I mean, he seemed very upset, you know, which I understand why. So to defuse the, the argument or anything. So furthermore, I walked to, I walked inside where we put Joy inside the house. And then that's when, my mother-in-law told me what happened. That's when I stepped out and I asked the lady that was bit. I went up to her and I said, are you okay? She said, yes, and she seemed very panicky. And I just told her, I was like, well, can you tell me what happened? Get your side of the story. She told me what happened pretty much as she was walking out, um, walking her dog by my mother-in-law's house. Joy just went straight for the dog. Um, and I guess she grabbed her by the neck. And as soon, I guess, while, you know, in that motion, in that moment, I guess she panicked, tried to get, try to take Joy out of her, try to take Joy out of the dog. She was bit in the process. I didn't know that she got bit in the chin until today, but that's what, that's what I was told. And then, um, yeah, I was just talking to her and, you know, that's when the police arrived at the scene. I told them my side of the story. I was kind of translating for my mother-in-law cause she kind of has a hard time talking in English but I was translating for it, kind of telling the officers what was going on. When you had your last vicious and dangerous dog in your the hearing officer found <clears throat> sufficient evidence was presented that on June 24, 2017, Joy attacked and caused injury to Mr. Leon's dog, Fazi, but whether the fight was provoked or not couldn't be determined because it was Yeah, I mean, Joy has been around my four-year-old daughter since she was born. She's been around other dogs. The, I, I'm assuming the way, because if you notice that every dog that she's had an incident with has been a small dog, a very small dog. Joy tends to get excited and wants to play. I guess the way she plays, the small dogs, you know, they kind of find that very, you know, aggressively. So they snap back, you know, dog when the dog snaps at each other, you know, a fight starts, you know, obviously, she overpowers the small dog, and that's when incidents like this happen. I understand that, but this is a little bit different because even after Shorty ran off, mm -hmm. Joy turned on Miss Martini and kept biting her. Oh, the lady? Yeah. Which she, she I, I, I don't, I didn't know that. You know, from what I, from what I was told was that the lady was trying to take Joy out of, from what I know now, Shorty, take Joy out of Shorty's, you know, neck. And then that's how she got the bit mark in her hand. I didn't know that Shorty got away and then Joy still went after her. I did not know that until you told me right now. I was not aware of that. Um, but, I mean, there's 
there's really nothing I can say at this point. I'm trying to, I'm, we're trying to find a solution to the problem. Have you, since the last hearing, <coughs> uh, hearing Officer Foster said that You'll keep joy and muscle when we, we, I, I purchased the muscle. It's actually rubberish from the front, so it's now a way she can get off of the muscle. Every time I walk her, I walk her with a muscle. Whenever she's at home, she is without a muscle, which I'm aware of that she can be without a muscle at home. But, um, I mean, like I said, it, I'm not trying to make an excuse of why she got out, but when my when she's at home, the doors are locked. You know, if somebody's coming in and outside of the house, we put Joy in the, in, in the room that she was in with locked doors, you know. The hearing officer said that you need to do more to ensure that Joy doesn't have... I mean, in the door, there's no holes Joy at the... Finished, okay. That uh, you need to do more to ensure that Joy does not have any opportunities to escape from water. And because the second hearing is coming up, it seems that that's not Because you're letting people in your house, you know, you're like, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I, 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 all I can say was it's probably miscommunication because the workers have keys. From what I'm, I don't live there anymore. From what I'm told is that the workers have keys. Because at first, when the fir workers first started coming to the house, it was a problem with Joy. So we'll put Joy in the backyard, but then that's when they had to get back and forth to the backyard. So we put Joy in the room, and then that's when I said, you know what, we're just going to give you guys keys to make sure that the door is locked. Because Joy has a tendency, when the door is open, she flies out. She just goes out to the street. You know, so we said we'll give you guys keys to make sure that the door is open and closed. When you guys leave, you guys close the door. And how much does Joy weigh? Joy is about, I can tell you, about 120 pounds. And how old is she? She is four. She's the same age as my daughter. Has she ever been to a dog behaviorist? A dog behavior? No. Any, any recent dog training? Recent? It's just kind of been me and the mother of my child kind of just giving her a little bit of training I mean when I at, at first we um, when we walked her at first we didn't walk her with a muscle but she was very aggressive or it's not that she's aggressive it's just the way she wants to play with small dogs they don't like that so they growl at each other so that becomes a problem so we just, just decided to start walking her with a muscle and that's what we've been doing on since four Not at the moment. Thank you. That's it for uh, uh, Officer Crawford, does the police department have a recommendation in this matter? Um, I, I don't think we can risk public safety again. Uh, I think this dog should be humanely euthanized. Does animal care and control have anything about this case? Um, only the, the dog is in currently in custody right now, and so we appreciate the quick resolution. Thank you. Hi, I'm Diana Christensen with Animal Care and Control. Um, I agree with the San Francisco Police Department's recommendation. I don't believe that we can risk public safety. Um, it's a pretty serious uh, incident that we just had the bite on the chin is very concerning to us in terms of public safety and safety to humans. Thank you. Commissioner Ramirez, did you want to come back up and respond to the recommendations made by uh, Officer Crockett and Ms. Christensen, who is the Deputy Director of Animal Control? So what is their decision? Their recommendation, I make the decision, okay. they're recommending that Joy be uh, humanely I mean, I, I disagree. I mean, I feel like, you know, everybody deserves a chance. I mean, Joy, it's a, been a house dog. She's been around my daughter since she was four, since she was a baby. Never had an incident with my daughter. I understand what happened. Happened. There's nothing I can change or say that I can change that. But I am trying to find a solution to it. You know, if, if it means, you know, being more aware or, you know, or just having to just leave Joy inside. You know, while workers are coming, or just you know, have a contract with workers. You know, making sure that they close the door when they're leaving. You know, we can do that. You know, but you know, at the end of the day, it's your, it's your decision against mine, and I'm just trying to find a solution to it. I do deeply apologize for what happened to the lady. You know, 
things happen, but. Ms. Chavez Clement, did you want to respond to the recommendations by Animal Control and Officer Patrick? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just feel like um, she shouldn't uh, sleep because she has never attacked a human. She has ne she has been around other children. She has been around strangers in the house. And there has never been a problem. I just think that just things just got out of hand. This is the first time that she has ever bit a, a, a person. And I just don't feel like she should be put to sleep. I just think that just her um, being on top of the dog, I think she just she just ended up biting her in the process. But I don't think she should be put to sleep. Maybe not. Uh, yeah. So I assume I really